hey guys, what's happening? So, it's time to finally get this engine in this uh, Traxxas clone here. So, right now there's currently a 15 in it. Uh, that's actually what came with it. Uh, Magic Wheel, or what's it called? Smart Tech 15. And in my previous video, I rebuilt this thing right here, this uh, HPI uh, Nitro Star 3.0. So I'm hoping to get a little bit more bottom end, and uh, I need to check the actual tooth count. So I was hoping I was maybe going to go back a few teeth, you know, like lower the tooth count on the uh, gear here, because that would actually give it more bottom end and torque. So I don't know if this thing is stuck in second gear, but it just doesn't have a lot of bottom end torque. Um, I mean, this kind of feels more like a kid's toy. It's not like a real, you know, like a Mugen or some kind of low C or something like that. It just, it just feels more like a kid's toy. Um, Alright, so it actually has one of the old side exhaust. This is basically like an exact copy of the original like tracks. It's like 1.5, or before the 2.5, when the actual engine was a side exhaust. And here are the engine right. side by side. Like I said, i got to do a tooth count to see what the difference there is. So if you go down lower on the uh, pinion gear, you're going to actually have more torque, but you're going to lose top end. Alright, so i got to move over the quick uh, road start. Um, exhaust pipe over. Got some new gaskets. So this actually looks like a smarter rotor start box here. So I do actually have some other ones here I can get going in there. Alright, so the uh, pinion gear on here is 20 teeth and this one's uh, 19 teeth. So I am going to be getting a little bit of torque, but not a lot. But I actually do kind of like the low profile head. That's pretty cool. So it might fit on there actually. Or I wanted to change it to the uh, low profile head here. I could have some issues with the exhaust restrictions. Um, so if you look at the carburetor inlet on this side, it's actually pretty small, and this one's definitely a lot bigger. I mean, it's a bigger carb, obviously, bigger engine, so it needs more air. But the whole outlet on the exhaust is pretty tiny, so that was probably fine for the 15, or sorry, right there. Um, so that was probably fine for the 15, but... So if this doesn't actually, I feel like I'm getting choked off. I'm probably going to be choked off, but um, I do actually have some other small block, uh, small, you know, one-tenth scale, whatever, small block uh, exhaust pipes. Not exactly the right kind for that, but I guess I could be able to adapt it somehow. I don't know. Maybe powder coat of black, maybe. It's a dynamite pipe. can't remember where I got this from. In one of these little eBay scores. <laughs> All, right. All right, so I'm actually going to put it back together the way it is with this pipe. But I'm going to start actually getting this pipe ready. I'm going to ultrasonic clean it. Um, yeah, just because, I mean, I, I, I know automatically this is going to create back pressure. So I could try to drill out a little bit more. I mean, that might help. But really, I just need a bigger stinger. So I find out more about this pipe. It's called a dynamite quiet pipe, 10 scale. Yeah, normally it would be for like a, you know, it would actually have the springs here. So I'm going to adapt it. I'm going to... Grind it off. I'm not going to bother with it. I mean, I, already, I know this is going to be a problem, so I didn't waste my time. So I'm going to come back, clean this up, grind this off, powder coat it, and uh, run like this. So ideally, ideally you, don't, you normally want this sort of toward the top. So I'm going to try to get this high. This one's pretty low. But yeah, that, that way you're not shooting an actual exhaust uh, burnt uh, oil fuel back into your uh, fuel tank. All right, so here are the exhaust pipes uh, compared... So I might change a few things. Um, I don't know if this thing was stock or not, you know. But uh, the fact that I can't see a light either means it must be two chamber. Right? This is definitely two chamber right here. Yeah, I forgot. I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is called the uh, Quiet Muffler. Dynamite marks this thing as a 10 scale uh, Quiet Muffler. I'm going to get rid of the dynamite on there, but I'm going to hit it with my uh, sandblaster aluminum oxide. i got to rough it up before I powder coat it. But uh, I'm not going to go through all the steps of powder coating, but I'm just going to sandblast it, powder coat it, throw it in my oven. i got some pretty good color in this thing. You can see that the light better right there. Some mining rigs right there. But, alright. Alright. Yeah, you got to make sure you really clean it the second after you've uh, sandblasted because you want a super clean surface for the uh, powder coat to stick. So one of the tricks is you have to make sure that part is super dry because if it's not super dry, what's going to happen is when you go to bake it, it's going to it's going to bubble. It's going to the, the moisture will escape and put a hole in your your uh, your coating. So I'm using actually black wrinkle. 
So if you're not familiar with powder coating, it's electrically charged. So I have a foot pedal. My foot's in the foot pedal right now. Charging this, as you'll see. I'm gonna turn the air up a little bit. Or it might be a lot up. There we go. Normally you wouldn't have to do that, so I'm, just, I'm really low on powder coat, so um, I need to turn the air up a little bit here. There we go. As you can see. So if I had more powder coat in there, I wouldn't have to shake it up like this. As you can see, it just sticks to it like that. There we go. Let's flat on. Here we go. Cool. Should be good. Don't want to go too crazy with it. Make sure you get the bottom here. You don't mean that's going to be covered by a piece of rubber. Alright, awesome. I'm going to bake this for uh, three, uh, 350 for 15 minutes. Every powder coat is different, so we've got to look at the instructions in the powder coat. Alright, so here is the completed powder coat exhaust. Let's go like that. i got to mess around with this uh, metal thing here. The retainer, the, the holder, like that thing right there, and I think it looks pretty good. Let's a closer look at it. It's a black wrinkle. So, yeah, the, the, the powder cutter I have is a Harbor Freight powder cutter. I think I bought that like 10 years ago. Done so many parts with it. Alright, so, got the exhaust pipe in. It's all hooked up. I wish I could bring this up a little, about a millimeter forward. Just the mounts aren't very adjustable. Uh, so yeah, I went from a three or two shoe clutch to a three shoe clutch just because I couldn't get the crankshaft This thing wouldn't come out far enough Yeah, but shim I shim it all these different ways uh, Really, I just need a, a different mount maybe adjustable mount maybe um, Yeah, because I'd like to bring this about a millimeter. It's not a hundred percent, but once it gets going it's gonna want to move forward so um, You know a little bit So about a millimeter off which I don't like, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to figure out a solution. But uh, looking good so far. Alright. Ready to fire this thing up. Alright, let's get this thing fired up. So I have uh, some uh, BP 23% nitro. Kind of bummed they stopped uh, selling the uh, Byron's. Alright, so I got my Akita drill start. This will be the first fire up. So I, I gotta first prime it. Uh, prime the fuel here. Okay, saw some fuel come out. Yeah, I had a little issue with the curb idle. Um, I don't know if it's stripped out or not, so I might have to fix that. Because when I had the spring in there, I couldn't, it wouldn't actively set the curb idle. Got the new nitro glow plug. Got some green. Uh, make sure my <laughs> and that's all adjusted. Okay. My hand here so it doesn't go taken off in case it because this thing doesn't have a bump box, I have to hold the car back in case it wants to run away.
table. Um, I'm getting up the curb by a little bit.